Good morning and welcome to the final episode of Daybreak this semester. I'm Brittany Lawfer. And I'm Ryan Bailey. Coming up on Daybreak, a look into a healthy new dynamic for feeding our furry friends. We're going to tell you how to keep your pets healthy. Plus, transportation in the south side on a weekend can be a real pain. What the city plans to do to help ease that pain, coming up. And as always, we have your campus, city, and national news. As well as weather, entertainment, and cooking. And James and Courtney will be out on the plaza. Daybreak starts now. In campus news this week, the salaries of university administrators were revealed. As of 2012, University President Paul Hennigan's salary was up to nearly $536,000 a year. Increasing pay and benefits for the university's other top five administrators are closing in on more than $200,000 a year. Hennigan's salary is determined by the Board of Trustees, which has raised his salary by almost 18% since 2012. Salaries of, a professor, salaries of professors are a different story, though. The average income for a full-time professor is about $87,000 a year and about $64,000 for an associate professor. The United Student Government will be have two new leaders next semester. For the fall 2014 semester, Junior Biological Sciences major Julian Singleton will be the president, and Junior National Security and Intelligence major Andrew Ladon will be the vice president. Elections were held all last week. Both candidates ran unopposed. A professor and a graduate student here at the university have been grant, given a grant by the University of Pittsburgh to study lichen. Professor Matthew Opdyke and student Joshua Daugherty will be studying the species diversity and dis distributions of lichens at Pi, Pi, excuse me, Pima Tuning State Park this summer. For more information on Opdyke's research, you can visit www.opdyke-environlab.com. That's all for your campus news. Now here's City, Brittany with City News. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. First, the G20 Summit in 2009, then One Young World in 2012. Now, Pittsburgh has been selected as one of 15 potential cities to host the 2016 Democratic National Convention. President Barack Obama has visited Pittsburgh twice so far this year, and now his party could be next. Pittsburgh officials will have to submit a proposal to host the convention by June 6. The convention will make its decision by the end of the year as of late as a of at or as late as early 2015. Chicago and New York are among the other 14 cities under consideration. Allegheny County Executive Rich Fitzgerald told the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette it would be great to shine the spotlight on Pittsburgh again. UPMC confirmed two babies have developed MRSA infections at McGee Women's Hospital since February. Media Relations Director Gloria Krebs said the or origin of the bacteria is unknown and the babies' families and state agencies have been notified. A Pittsburgh Mifflin school had to send a letter home to parents and guardians after a second grade girl brought several weapons to school last Tuesday. Pittsburgh Mifflin Elementary School principal Edward Little Hale searched the girl's belongings after a teacher alerted him and found two pocket knives and a metal stake. Little Hale reported the incident to school police. The situation is being handled following school procedures and the student is facing disciplinary charges. Pittsburgh has many attractions. No doubt one of those is the South Side. But during the weekends, with so many people around, safety becomes an issue. Daybreak correspondent Kelty Metzger tells us how the city of Pittsburgh is trying to make transportation safer. Between 15 and 20,000 people swarm the south side streets every Friday and Saturday night, creating significant transportation and safety issues. For the past two years, City Council President Bruce Krause has been working with the Responsible Hospitality Institute and its president Jim Peters to find ways to manage the bustling nightlife. The first step is tackling what he calls the transportation nightmare along East Carson Street. If 
you stick around here late at night on a on a Friday or Saturday when it's the most populated, it's terrible. Getting He's out here from is where a mess. I live. Peter says what is launching this March is a coordinated transportation hub where cabs can pull in and queue up just like at an airport. The Carson Street Initiative is the first test project to see what works and how solutions can be implemented in other neighborhoods. Some of the supervisors at Zone 3 were tasked with coming up with some uh, ideas. One of the uh, suggestions was that we implemented taxi stands, have cab stands available, maybe on 12th Street, one at 18th Street, and then one further up by 22nd Street, so that uh, it would be easier for people to go and get uh, taxis. The cab service in Pittsburgh doesn't really exist. Anywhere else you go, there's cabs lined up outside, and I think it would create a much safer environment and a much uh, more enjoyable environment for everybody if they had that in place. Transportation is just the first phase within the larger plan concerning Southside hospitality, development, and safety. Reporting for Daybreak, I'm Kelsey Metzger. Thanks for that, Kelsey. That's all I have for your city news. Now here's Ryan. Thanks, Brittany. Coming up next on Daybreak, Kelsey is going to be here with your national news report. And dog food so natural, people could eat it too. Meet the local pet owner turning her kitchen into a test lab for dogs everywhere.